Hey guys, welcome back. I promised you uh, an update video in the comments. Uh, I've been so busy, I haven't been able to film all of the uh, things that I've done, but uh, it's tour time. So here we go. Okay, let's start with the cab. So this is the back of the cab, as you can see. Uh, in, a, in another video I did earlier, you can see that I removed the back seats built this platform and carpeted it. Uh, what you probably can't see at the moment is that it's split. I've got a cut right here. So on this side, under here, are my tools. Not fully organized yet. Um, I will have more to go in there. Uh, but, and there's my five gallon water jug, which not sure that's its final resting place, but there it is for now. Uh, this right here, that's a pack away uh, above ground steel fire pit. So you all recognize these guys. Those are Max Trax MK2 traction boards. Uh, I figured I'd go with the best because that's kind of what you want. Good old Coleman chair right there. And uh, that's just my camera case. All right, let's go around the other side. Okay, so on this side, you can see underneath, where in that other video I showed you, there's the compressor fully installed with all the hoses. There's the, the lines that I have behind it, the air hoses. I've got two jacks, and I have the, uh, the Bluetooth controller too, which means uh, I can inflate two tires or deflate two tires at the same time using my phone. That's the on-off switch, which the engine has to be running. And, uh, you know, port a party. That's a Reliance port a party. With a, it's got legs, and a seat. So you put it, if this lifts up, the bag goes inside. And then, as I was saying, I don't think I can lift it up right now. I've got this in the way, but it's split right here. The reason why I wanted it split is that if I needed to do work on the compressor, if I needed to, if a part fails, I got to change out a hose, then I can just lift this side up. It's hinged at the back. As you can see, there are four hinges, two on this side and two on that side. Both sides do lift up. I don't expect to be lifting up the other side. The, the tools can be pulled out from the side end. But again, not quite finished yet. I have more to get and more to put in. The backboard. I had to make brackets for that, which I think I put in the other video. It's solid. For now, this is a temporary setup for the um, the Max Trax. Eventually, I'm going to be putting racks on the top, and that will go up there. Speaking of the racks, let's take a look. So, as you can see right now, I've got nothing on the top of the cab. Eventually, I will have a rack up there. And the plan eventually is, you can see those two solar panels right there. Uh, I plan to move those down on top of the cab because they fit kind of perfectly with inside the size of the, uh, the cab dimension on the roof there. Those are two 100 watt Renogy solar panels. Connected in parallel. Wait, is it parallel? Uh, no. Sorry, I misspoke. I actually connected them in series. So you can see those. Um, the cables, as you can see, they come down on the top of the cab and then they run down inside and then they go underneath 
and when you saw in the build video they enter in in that back corner of the truck bed all right let's go take a look inside first thing you can see right here this is the geyser system portable shower it doesn't have a rain head like you uh, normally see there's a hose that clicks into this and you flick the switch this version has uh, it can run it cold or it can heat up the water this is the canister it holds three liters of water the hoses are underneath there so I just click it in and this is the power cord it's 12 volt uh, speaking of right over here when I had the shell put on I had them put on uh, 12 volt outlets right there too and I also have it on the power at the back which we will see in just a minute okay uh, so let's take a look inside uh, okay so the first thing I want to show is how I'm gonna pull up the tailgate and then pull down the top here so what I should have shown you and I didn't I made a d-ring that screws on to the tailgate and I have a strap that I made oh I forgot I locked that <laughs> oh this is gonna be a really goofy channel just heads up on that one all right so <laughs> So carabiner and I got some uh, nylon strap. I glued it together right there as a loop. Uh, I wanted to be able to disconnect it. So all I gotta do is lift up the loop, hook it on, grab the loop, and we're closed. And then I can take it off. It doesn't bug me. I, I could leave it on, but I don't want to. And then for the handle, I've got a, a suction cup handle. It's also sticky, but I can reach up and grab it. Oh, it's dark, you say? I got you covered. Let there be light. I hope that's enough light that you guys can see this. Um, all right, so. There's the handle, as you can see it's really dark in here because I had the windows tinted with a ceramic tint and on top of the factory tint it's very very dark so even though I can see out nobody can see in with the lights on they might be able to see a dim glow but that's all they can see ah uh, I think I want to put that on too just to give us a little more light. Is that going to glare? I think that might glare, so let's let me turn it off. Okay, so countertops for mica. And uh, let me tell you, working with Formica, I had never worked with Formica before, uh, preparing it, cutting it. They say to use a router with a bearing. I did not have one of those. I have my hands in a Dremel. And that was not a good uh, match. <laughs> After a, a bit of trial and error, I finally got it. Anyway, so it's glued down. Nice countertop surfaces. Uh, let me just grab you. Okay, so on this side, I call this the kitchen. Well, under power, but we'll go from right to left. This is a, dom a domestic fridge. I already have my ketchup lined up in there. Uh, so you can see, you can hear probably that the compressor is running right now. I got a freezer compartment right there. And a couple of shelves. I do have a shelf coming to go here. I guess it's an egg shelf. Hopefully it holds eggs 
well enough but it'll slot right there is my hope this right here is uh, an egg tray that I bought but as you can see it takes up quite a bit of space in there so I, if I can put the eggs here then I shall and I'll get rid of that so there's that that works well and the drawers they are on drawer slides uh, and as you can see I've got barrel bolts right there to secure them I did have them on that side originally but if you look here this is slightly cut in I had to make this uh, cut in further because of the dimensions of the fridge so I this part had already been cut this this and that were all one piece so I had to trim that down to accommodate the size of the fridge which left this sticking out a little bit so when I had the barrel bolts right there the fridge would jiggle so I moved them over here and now they're tight so top drawer kitchen utensils that's like an egg fry little griddle thing there's the induction cook cooked up uh, that's my ice scraper <laughs> for, the, for the freezer when it gets iced over that's the kettle I, have, I don't have all the stuff in yet, but these are pots and pans and uh, fold away storage containers and things like this. Um, these, it's a work in progress. I have more things to put in, but there's that. Now the bottom drawer is not on slides because it's sitting on the floor. I designed it that way in the first place. Uh, it wiggles a bit. Ah slides out now this is going to be my general food storage you can see I've got a bunch of stuff in there already but I'm gonna have more canned foods and heavy things that which is why I wanted it sitting on the floor to support the weight it's a bit of a mess disorganized right now but uh, that's how it's looking so far and I put for mica on the front of these two uh, one it looks better but main reason was plywood is very soft and I found myself putting dings in there on the surface of the wood and I didn't like that the formica stops it okay power I'm sure you guys are all wondering how that worked out that's the blue Eddy AC 200 max and is the reason why I've been further delayed the touchscreen on that unit is the main controlling element for it and it started to fail I can control it and do control it through uh, through the app on the phone and that worked fine the unit actually worked perfectly but the touchscreen was failing so I called Luati and they, uh, they had me ship it back so that process took about three and a half weeks long story I may tell you later uh, but I got it back um, about three days ago which is why I now can make this video all right so on to my elaborate setup okay so let me show you something real quick so countertop this part you can see is cut right there uh, don't look too closely at this that's that's the madman with the Dremel guy that's me <laughs> so this is held on with just magnets you can see right here I needed to get the longer ones because I found the shorter ones weren't holding on so there's the plates underneath you can see and it just snaps in place perfectly all right so you can see on top of the blue eddy there are two wireless charging pads the thing weighs 62 pounds it's heavy um, and the main way it charges is through a, a wall jack uh, you can actually charge it up seven different ways 
but um, so I've got it dual wired and I'll talk a little bit about this but if you guys want to know more uh, about how I did this uh, drop a comment and uh, maybe I'll make a video specifically for the electrical system so you're probably all aware of the dual wiring system where you uh, you wire from the engine compartment from the battery through an isolator uh, and then into your charging unit so that's what I've done that right there that's the isolator which most people put in the engine compartment turns out in mine it was harder to do that and because I built this thing out of wood I just screwed it right there and dropped the line straight out down underneath and up to the battery it's fused at both ends so to be able to use the main charging unit for the Blue Eddy, which is this that's plugged directly in and there it is plugged into the inverter so the way it goes it goes from the battery stroke alternator out through the isolator out of the isolator into this and then out of this so it goes the output voltage from the alternator is 13.99 volts so that comes in the, the isolator reads that higher voltage closes the circuit flows out this inverter then sees that it's got power and uh, transforms it to 110 which then goes through that now the reason why uh, you can't go straight DC to DC because it's not a 12 volt battery uh, I think it's, uh, it's either 52.8 or 58.8 something like that that's what the battery is uh, so that's got a transformer in it that takes it from the 110 to uh, the 58.8 volt output that it needs to charge directly uh, so uh, it only works when the engine is running obviously because it, it all goes through an isolator I, I oversize the cable I've got a zero gauge cable right there it's way bigger than required but that's because further down the line I may upgrade that to a 1500 watt and put a 250 amp um, alternator in the truck the truck presently has a uh, 135 amp okay so there's that and tuck down below and you can see all the jumble of wires in there so those wires then go up uh, to the um, uh, the solar panels on the roof uh, that, that I showed you earlier now to keep this in place when driving uh, I got loops there and on the side and then I just got these straps to just hold it now the other thing you got to be aware of is that when the inverter is running or when it's just hot there's a fan that sucks air in from that side from that side and blows it out that side so you need an air gap so I put wood blocks to stabilize it and I got one on the floor as well to stop it sliding that way so uh, and as you can see it is solid uh, periodically I'll have to make sure the, the straps don't wiggle loose but uh, and then I had to build uh, I mentioned in the build that I, I had to build a box for this to back up onto to pull it to and then in there I keep all the spare stuff for the blue eddy the cables and the fuses and things like that uh, uh, I will be putting more I've got, I've got an electrical tester in there too it's just for quick grab things so if I'm in here and I got to do some troubleshooting the electrical system I can just pull this up and go grab a screwdriver and whatnot which I'm uh, I will put in later on so uh, touch screen for the blue eddy boom there it is um, I will go into detail with that more later in a later video when I'm cooking and things but for right now uh, that is what I'm calling the electrical corner all right and then just to put it back boom and it just snaps right in place boom nice and solid all right so 
under the mattress I have storage areas as you can see uh, there's nothing much in it right now that's a pee bottle over there um, so eventually I'll, I'll get all of that sorted out with the things that I need uh, there are four compartments in all there we go okay so in the middle uh, I bisected it back to front or side to side I should say at this point so I made a drawer for the front for the quick grab stuff it's probably gonna become a junk drawer but things I want to use like frequently they'll go in there but that to stop it sliding out is that gonna be good I lift up the mattress back here another compartment can you guys see that yeah so right now I've got my hoses for the uh, shower unit in there but there's a lot of space back there so I'm probably going to be using that for the long-term storage because as you can see it's kind of awkward to get to and then I've got another compartment down on the other end which is very similar to the other side now I think I'm going to modify this eventually cut it separate it out and I think for the end right now it's just a, a wall I think I'm gonna make that as a drop down things to come okay so let's start with the sleeping bag the sleeping bag is a Coleman zero degree sleeping bag you can see it's layered I bought the layered one simply because I can peel this middle section out and use it like a comforter or something like that this is just a, I don't quite know why they put this in there it's, it's, it's like a just a one one layer thing okay so there's a the sleeping bag as you can see on top so for the mattress I couldn't find one that would fit the dimensions that I wanted so I had to cut one I bought a, a four inch memory foam topper for a twin mattress and I cut it down so pillows regular pillow so I wanted to show you this one though because this is what the mattress is actually made of because I cut the the remaining of the foam into a pillow so you can see it's got a one inch base foam high density and then you got a three inches of memory foam right there that is what the mattress looks like okay so locking the the back door at night so you can see here I've got let me get some better light here I've got these loops got a chain turnbuckle right here I plan to improve on this as the turnbuckle so it's got a hook so it just hooks on to the arm right now and then you tighten it down uh, I need to put a hole <sighs> okay, you guys see that I need to drill a hole right there for it to hook into so that it doesn't slip because what I found when you hook it if you if you start prying on the handle it slides to the end and then you can open it so we don't want that anyway for now i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you guys enjoyed the tour the camera work is kind of a little off but stay tuned i'll catch you in the next one